Well, millions of Gen Zers have been at the forefront of the climate activist movement, like my next guest also, Jerome Foster II. He's a leading voice for black and indigenous visibility in climate activism, acting as the executive director of the international youth advocacy nonprofit organization called One Million of Us. We are thrilled to have you with us, Jerome. You've been very busy meeting with world leaders. We finally got you today. Well, it's great to be here. It's a pleasure. Well, look, you just spoke at the UN's Say It With Science conference, and you were also a keynote speaker at COP26. So what did you ask of your world leaders? Absolutely. So COP26 is a really pivotal moment for humanity because this is the last best hope for us to make tangible and systemic change really a reality. There's so far at COP26, there's been great speeches, there's been great promises, but the focus now is on implementation, on the strategy to decarbonize our society, our economy, and the culture that we live in, prioritizing the environment. That's really what COP26 is really focused on this year, and also making sure that we reach that target in, in, the, in the fastest timeline as possible. So you have said that one of your biggest goals was to to demand to the to end a fossil fuel uh, subsidies. And this is your tweet. You said money and greed will not dictate what happens here at this conference. The power of our movement will. Why do you believe this is so crucial to combating climate change, Jerome? Absolutely. When we come to start talking about really what climate justice is all about, it's about making sure that not just stopping the emission of CO2 particles, but making sure communities are safe. And the best way that we do that is to transition to clean energy. But right now, clean energy has no chance because the U.S. government and countries around the world are using our tax dollars to go and subsidize coal and oil, which is killing us. Instead, why not have our governments actively fund the solutions that will make us breathe cleaner air, have access to cleaner water, and have access to unpolluted land? That's why that demand is the key um, demand that we have as a youth movement and that we're pushing so hard for it here at COP26. So the youth are really leading this climate movement to create a better life for all generations. What do you think is at stake and why do you think every generation should care? And who was your inspiration? How did, how did you even build a passion for this, Jerome? Right now, really what is mobilizing this movement and, and why so many young people have been joining us is because of the fact that we have such a tight timeline. And as a young person, I grew up with a feeling of anxiety, a feeling of, of really disappointment in the past few decades of inaction. Like for 50 years, we've been begging people to take climate action seriously. But then now as young people come into the picture and we start demanding change on a massive level, then they start just greenwashing and making it seem like they're making change. And that's, that's why young people are here is because we're demanding clear actions, clear targets, clear implementation for our future. And 7 million young people organized with us in September of 2019. And there's, it's been two years in a pandemic and we're still here. That shows that young people will care. Now we're going to continue mobilizing until we get a few, few, good future. Well, you are the youngest ever White House advisor in U.S. history, serving on the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council within the Biden administration with your help. So what are you hoping for for the future? What, what, is, the, what is your set goal? What I'm hoping for in the future is that we first pass this $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, which needs to be fully funded, and then next to make sure that we root ourselves in equity and justice, and not just continue to talk about um, the continual end of, of a pollution, but an end to the ideology of limitless extraction. Really what the climate justice movement is asking for is for our economy to change, for them to not just focus on limitless growth and just continual exploitation, but to root ourselves in equity, root ourselves in making sure that every nation across the world can, can insulate themselves from the climate crisis and to be safe. Right now, I was speaking with the president of the Maldives. He's talking about how his home is going to be underwater in the next decade. Originally, back in 2005, he thought he'd have until 2100. But that is happening right now. The climate crisis is not something in the future. It's something that's destabilizing millions and millions of people. And that's why I'm fighting and joining this, this Biden administration to show that young people care, and that billions of people across the world are looking to the United States to be a leader 
and to be the leading global country that will stand up and protect people. That's what this administration is all about, and that's what President Biden needs to define his administration behind, is behind climate justice. Well, I hope my kids grow up to be as passionate as you about something that's so important to our planet right now. Jerome Foster II, thanks so much for inspiring work uh, as a climate crisis hero. We sure appreciate you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.